Schmack em a gob, it's time for the news. And this time, I'm only dedicating the news to one story. Yesterday, well, actually, some of yesterday and the rest today, because it's over, it's like a hundred, it's like over an hour and a half. Rachel Gordon, ex fiance of Ace Fairly, was on a show called So Fucking Cool online. And uh, I'm going to give a couple disclaimers before I get into the news. Number one, if you're underage, get away from this now. Turn it off. Go away. I mean, hell, if I had it my way, I wouldn't let people under 45 listen to this. It gets vile. Okay? So if you're, you know, under the law, over 18, I guess you can listen. So if you're under 18, turn this off and go look at SpongeBob, you little shits. And also, I want to say, this is her side of the story. I'm not saying she's lying. I'm not saying she's telling the truth. I don't know. I'm not going to be an um, uh, one of those armchair detectives that's going to, you know, come to conclusion with speculations. Uh, but she does uh, bring up some crazy stuff. And also, another disclaimer, anybody out there that's thinking, come on, why are you giving her attention and bringing this up? You should also go join those little shits and go watch SpongeBob yourself. This show ain't for you, so uh, skedaddle. All right, so let's get into this, okay? I took notes of all that she said, and let's start from uh, the how this all started. You know, Ace Fairly left her, and according to her, the reason Ace Fairly left her was because Paul and Jean gave him orders to leave her because. She posed a threat, you know, because she accused of, uh, she was accusing Gene of touching her inappropriately. Later on, saying that he put a finger in her. Said that, she said that in the interview. And she also claims there's going to be a reunion. So, you know, Ace is following orders. This is her side. I'm not saying it's true. Uh, Then she put a restraining order on Ace. Because Ace ended up going to her house with, uh, I believe, her daughter and a bodyguard to retrieve a couple stuff. And it, it, it was ugly. And then there was a restraining order after that. Uh, she claimed that Ace also ruined her credit. So she's she's broke now. She was kicked out of that house. She's staying at a hotel that she's going to be evicted, I guess, today. Because yesterday she said, I'm being evicted tomorrow. She's going to be living in her car in the streets and she needs help badly so that's uh, where this all started so because of all this that just happened uh, is a scenario that made her open up about a bunch of things that Ace told her according to her first thing she says was Paul Paul Stanley uh, when he was 17 18 uh, would uh would would have sex with his sister and they had a child and to this day Paul calls that child his niece so there's incest there's pedophilia coming up and rape and I'm warning you if you're still listening it gets really vile so if you're listening now hey man it's on you but yeah so Paul According to her, uh, was told by Ace that Paul had sex with his sister and they had a child and calls her his niece. Now, the next thing she says was uh, Paul and Ace Fraley would share a room, you know, when they were on tour back in the early Kiss days before they became big. Now, I know my history. I know I've heard and read stories of Gene and Peter sharing a room. But does that mean, well, since they both shared a room, it must have been Ace and Paul in another room? Maybe not. Maybe Ace stayed with, you know, roadies and Paul stayed with roadies. I don't know. Or maybe they did stay together. I wasn't there. But according to Ace, well, according to Rachel, Ace told her, you know, there was times that Ace would get drunk and pass out and he would wake up and find Paul Stanley giving him a blowjob. On many occasions... And even at one time, Ace got so upset that he knocked Paul out because Ace was like, leave my dick alone. 
I mean, this is this is what she's saying. Uh, Ace also told her that Paul shot steroids and pounded volumes, volumes, and craved young boys, and promised a lot of up-and-coming bands. You know, uh, he would do things for them that had young boys. This is crazy stuff, man. So. That's where the pedophilia comes in. But no, pedophilia is still not done with these stories coming up. Um, Ace had a daughter from a groupie, a famous groupie that was once with Robert Plant. So there's a daughter we don't know about that Ace has from a groupie, according to her. Uh, Ace also told her that he had sex with 12-year-olds. And she found child porn in his computer. And Ace said it wasn't his. It was, I think, the bodyguard. Blamed it on the bodyguard. But she was like, well, if it's his, why is it in your computer? She also claimed Gene was into child porn. And Gene was into 13-year-old, too. And uh, this is true. This part is true that at 8 a.m. Uh, back in 2015, the cops broke into Gene's house searching for child porn in his computer now. As I understand, they found nothing. That's what I heard. But she did bring that up. Oh, he's into job born and even the cops invaded his house because of it. But that's what she's claiming. She also claimed that she was abused at 14 years old by a producer. And at a young age, she witnessed child trafficking. So she knows a lot about that. And uh, as far as Jean, uh, according to her, uh, Ace told her that Gene was uh, friends with, you know, the Epstein, uh, that Epstein guy and, you know, the people that ran around with Epstein and that, you know, Gene was freaking out over this whole Epstein case as it was unfolding. And uh, told her that Gene loved 12-year-olds, 12-year-olds girls. Wow. <laughs> this is crazy stuff. Um... Then, she also said, and she mentioned this before, but uh, I, she brought it up again, that Ace said to her that Gene and Paul tried to have him killed on many occasions in the 70s. So, they wanted him to go to a certain gig that was going to pay a lot and, and have him killed there. That's another story. But there's, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, a, I'm just about halfway done. It, it still gets vile, so... If you're already getting disgusted what you're hearing so far, you should definitely turn this off and go look, go watch SpongeBob. All right. Um, Ace said uh, he has had he has had girls killed in the past, uh, and it, it made it look like suicide. Like he he didn't actually do the killing. He had a bodyguard that would kill for him and make it look like suicide and threaten her. They can do it to her too if she doesn't shut her mouth. And here she is saying all this. All right. And next, uh, Ace threw a knife at her at one time and missed her by inches. That was a huge knife. And he did it for no reason, not even during an argument. He just took a knife out and threw it at her while she was in bed and almost like, as she said, almost took off her leg. So it must have been a big-ass knife. Uh, Ace owns a lot of par uh, Nazi paraphernalia. That uh, is kind of well-known. If you all know... Uh, there's actually a picture of uh, Ace in the outfit and even Paul Stanley, who's Jewish, in the Nazi outfit. And she said that uh, Ace is obsessed with Nazis, he hates Jews, and he hates blacks. And she's Jewish. He was about to marry a Jewish girl, and he hates Jews. Not saying it's true or not, just bringing up a little factoid in between this. Uh, next... She says she has recorded Ace on audio saying anti-Semitic rants and says she will release it when the time is right. She says it lasts about three, four minutes of him going off on some anti-Semitic rant. Uh, rant. Uh, she has uh, also been saying she has been reached out uh, to them. Uh, she's been reaching out for people for help because of her financial situation, and even reached out to Ted Nugent and left him a voicemail for help because she's about to be living in her car. 
because she has no family. Yeah, she has nobody. So she's trying to find somebody that can help her. Uh, she does have Kiss memorabilia on her website, like platinum albums and stuff that, you know, she says that if you buy it from her, you can flip it for three times the cost. So, you know, which still sounds, it might be expensive, you know, three times the cost. If it's Because, you know, uh, platinum albums eight from Ace Fraley, that would go for a lot, a lot of money. So... Uh, I, I believe her website is uh, Space Space Girl. Damn, I forgot. Listen to that interview and you'll find out uh, the name of the Space Girl and Ace dot com. Something like that. Uh, she uh, also says uh, that Ace Frehley's new girlfriend looks like a man and may be a man. Well, there I'll throw in my two cents. I don't see it. She doesn't look like a man to me, but hey. You know, in today's age, with technology, there's, you know, there's some transsexuals that can fool you out there. And if she's one of them, she may be the greatest looking transsexual girl I've ever seen. The most, the one that fooled me the most. Uh, all right. Next. Uh, oh, uh, they went to some charity event and it was some old lady there that was part of the charity. Full of diamonds, 80 years old, and Ace told her, Jean was having sex with her for money and that wasn't too long well it couldn't have been too long ago because she saw the old lady and asked Ace who is that lady she was kind of rude to me and Ace said oh Jean's having sex with her and you know she pays him so there's that she also brings up Steven Tyler and says that Steven Tyler beat his wife on the head and gave her a brain tumor and she later died from it she also brought up that Ace wears a hairpiece, which I could tell. I mean, he was going balding in the early uh, 2000s. And, but, you know, his hairpiece is really nice. It's better than any hairpiece that Gene and Paul ever wore. I mean, it, it actually does look real. If you didn't see Ace in the early 2000s, you probably thought it was real. Because it does look like Ace's hair back in the day. So it's not... Unless you, you're a kiss nerd like me that pays attention... Uh, you probably wouldn't have known it was a hairpiece. Ace, uh, she also said that Ace told her that uh, she had a hit out on her by Jeanette's family, which is Ace's uh, first wife, who uh, is part of the mob. I remember reading something about that as well, that Jeanette Fraley's family was connected with the mob. And she also said Gene Simmons also had a hit out on her. So then she ends it with um, how Ace doesn't know how to have sex. Doesn't like, you know, penis and vagina type activity. That the way he gets off, gets off is that she puts a dildo shoved up his ass. And it's kind of a role play where she plays a nurse. So he would say to her, hey, um, can, can I have the nurse tonight? And she, he even bought her like outfits. And so on. Now, as far as that goes, hey, man, to each its own. I mean, I don't like anything up my ass. But I can't say that I am the most, uh, uh, how, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I am the most, I'm a sexual deviant, okay? I admit it. But no, I don't want nothing up my ass. It's bad enough I have to go to the doctor and have an old man stick a finger up my ass twice a year for my prostate. Beware all you guys out there after, after you're 50 years old. You're going to have to do that. And I don't like it. It doesn't feel good. I doubt that uh, a girl would make it feel any better. Uh, something up the ass, a finger up the ass sucks. You know, the weird thing is, the last time I went to the doctor, it was really odd. He had his finger up my ass, but at the same time, he had both his hands on my shoulders. I don't know how he did that. It must have been a magic trick. Anyway, that's it. But I will say this, too. Uh, she also said that Ace said to her that he was a pathological liar. Now, the guy interviewing her said, well, since he's a pathological liar, don't you think maybe all this thing that he said was a lie? And she said, no, because Ace just loved lying to women. But he saw me different than other women because... You know, he would say to me that, you know, I'm the only woman that he was able to talk to. 
every other girl he was with, he would zone out when they would talk and he would leave the room. He wouldn't spend much time with her. So that's her side of the story. Boy, never a dull moment with Kiss, huh? Now, I'm just the messenger. Don't shoot me. And the reason I'm bringing all this crazy stuff up is, damn, why not? This is insane. This is the most insane shit I've heard about Kiss ever. And, and, and I'm not going to talk about it? No, I'm sorry. I am. I'm sorry. Hey, man, if anybody, like, ever digs up some dirt on me of all my crazy escapades, hey, man, I don't blame somebody to tell them because there's some juicy stories I've done, too, but none involved anything up my ass. So that's the news for this week. And uh, I know a lot of people don't believe her. A lot of people are you know, calling her, you know, crazy and stuff like that. And, hey, maybe you're all right. I'm not saying you're all wrong. But I don't know. I really don't know. All I know is that this is some crazy accusations that, I don't know, man. If you ask me, uh, if, if all this is a lie, then, boy, she's got a hell of a lawsuit on her hands coming up. Because, really, I mean, Paul incest craves little boys and gene craves little girls and ace had sex with little girls and you know mobs killings and, you know racism anti-semitic uh, rants wow insane well there you go rachel gordon from her own words saying that ace told her all this Hey, Rachel, hit me up, girl. <laughs> I'd love to interview you. That'd be great if I get to talk to Rachel Gordon, if you're listening. You hear I'm not biased. You know, I'll give you a platform. And, you know, I got this channel here, you know, 17, 18,000 subscribers, over 10 million views. If you want to talk some more, come to Almost Human. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an ear and I'll give you a platform. What the hell? I won't attack you. So there you go, everybody. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope uh, you didn't get as grossed out as I did on some of this stuff. Till next time, schmack a gob. For those that use social media, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and you can join the Almost Human 56 Facebook page. All links are in the description below. A lot of you have been asking for it. Schmack em a gob merch. Yes, many types of shirts, long sleeves, short sleeves, hoodies, you name it. Plus other stuff like shower curtains and bedspreads and mugs and socks and clocks and oh, I can go on. But why should I? The link is below. Just click the link below in the description for all the Schmack em a gob merch. Order yours now. Smack them a cop. Hey, check out my podcast, The Vieira Vault, on Spreaker, YouTube, and iTunes. Subscribe. The links are below. Looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, Rat Sound Review Network has plenty of shows to choose from. Like Rat Sound Review, where they discuss the latest rock and metal news, as well as interviews and albums. Album vs. Album, the King Diamond Podcast, with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and sometimes this guy. Smack him a gob! Ralph Vieira is also on our network with the Vieira Vault. There's also Old Man Metal's Musings, where he discusses heavy metal and beer. Music is Life with Lou Mavs. The Right Opinion for Those Who Love Politics, a South Park podcast called Suck My Balls. The Infinite Fringe, a watch-along wrestling show called Beyond Bushido, ex Stradivarius guitarist, the Timo Tolki podcast, and the great Harry Barnett with I Don't Even Like Podcasts. So check out RatsaleReview.com or search Ratsal Review on YouTube, Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and more.